All right, so I wanted to talk about the subject in general, about the state of file systems in the stable trees. When I mean the, the, the LTS, uh, uh, the kernel.org stable trees. Um, my personal uh, perspective on this is that I'm using 5.10 LTS and using XFS on 5.10, and I realized that it has not been maintained at all, and I can go into the, the, the history, but some of you already know it. Uh, so there are like for two years, more than two years now, there are only three backported patches for XFS in 5.10, and it's not because there were no bug fixes over the uh, past two years. Uh, and I've done some work. Well, for, first of all, I'd like to say uh, in advance, this is my entrance to run XFS on 5.10. It's my responsibility to backport patches, and I indeed uh, made some progress with that. I can show it later if there's an interest, but uh, I currently have some uh, a backport branch for XFS, and I'm testing it I'm, uh, along with Lewis, which has the next talk uh, after me. But I know that the FS test uh, talk is going to be uh, a lot wider, so I wanted to have this session to discuss process. Because why, why do we even have the LTS kernels, right? We have them so we can collaborate on things and not duplicate work. I am, and that only means something if people actually use LTS kernels, so I cannot force, of course, and, and the stable kernel maintainers cannot force, force anybody to use the stable kernels, but, um, and, and if the big players, which, uh, which traditionally did not use the stable kernels, don't use them, then they are worth less for the subsystems in question. Uh, so the big players, uh, the distros, didn't use to use the LTS kernels, and they still kind of don't. Uh, but we do have some big players, uh, Google Cloud, uh, COS, and Microsoft, I hear, are following stable. So and they're not the only ones, obviously. I mean, Android also follows stable, but there's no interest in XFS in Android. So there has to be... Uh, uh, some overlap between uh, a large uh, player using an LTS and using a subsystem. Um, so, of course, in order to uh, be able to have stable file systems, the most important thing is files, FS tests, and we already know that, and we need to collaborate on testing, uh, collaborate on, on the test suite, and that's the next session, but baselines. Baselines are kind of per kernel, and there's sharing there. There can be sharing. Um, um, I, I want to open the floor to, to thoughts. I mean, I can show the work that I did but um, on XFS, but it's, I think it's less uh, relevant. Yeah, so, sorry, Ted, I'm going to steal this from you. Um, so when I worked at Red Hat, like this was kind of a pain point for us. It was like we were on an old kernel, QA would pull in the new FS tests, things would blow up, right? And this became really annoying to us. But I think that this is actually a really good indication of where we can pull in patches. Like there are clearly things that shouldn't, like my ref link changes. You probably don't want to pull that back into 5.10. But I think that constantly updating FS tests gives you a good indication of, okay, this test is new and it started breaking. This is this a target for backporting, right? Um, you know, depending on how much pain you're willing to absorb, well, right? it should be, maybe I should mention, there's also the, the factor that FS tests is mainly used to test upstream by developers. And when you go to test LTS, Things happen. I mean, you need to know. You need to use certain XFS blogs. It's not built and not being maintained. Uh, for at Not being friendly to 
people that test LTS kernel at all. So one of the things that I've done recently is just try to learn from LTP, which is another project that I'm working with for FS Notify, which is a project that is very much friendly to stable and being tested constantly on uh, stable kernels. And they have some practices that I thought we could maybe adopt. So just the beginning of the beginning is a standard way to, to, uh, to mark tests as regression tests of a fix. Uh, so I just added two annotation. It's supposed to be merged soon, as soon as Zorro gets his uh, hands around. Uh, uh, so just added two annotation that fixes by commit and fixes in kernel version. That doesn't mean the test will not pass in a kernel version in some enterprise distro or that backboard. It just means that if the test fails, you get a hint. The hint says maybe you don't need to backport this commit or maybe that's not going to work in the kernel that you're testing. And one more thing that you can do with those annotations is, and I haven't done that, create a simple script that works on your kernel branch, whatever private kernel branch, and checks whether the fixes com annotated fixes commits are in your kernel branch, or if they have been backported and annotated as upstream uh, commit. And then you can automatically create an expansion list that is custom to your kernel branch. Yeah, yeah so I mean, I think it perhaps might be useful to think about this from a more specific perspective. So I think most file systems, with XFS being the notable example uh, exception, are very happy to let the stable maintainers auto-pick um, bug fixes uh, into the stable kernel trees. Uh, my personal experience with ext4 is less than once a year there's a screw up. Maybe it's once a year. There's like some screw up where they have to revert a patch because you know, it wasn't, uh, uh, you know, it wasn't suitable for backporting and they didn't know that, or the art, their automated scripts didn't know that, um, that actually escaped to an LTS version. Uh, much more often someone notices when they send it out to the stable list and someone says, yeah, that one you really shouldn't backport and then they catch it right away. So that's why I believe most of the file systems have been very happy letting um, Greg and Sasha you know, the LTS maintainers do their thing. Uh, XFS has been the notable exception to that, uh, and there are good reasons for that. Uh, the XFS folks aren't in the room, so, you know, uh, suffice it to say there's history there. Um, one of the things that I had announced on the list, and unfortunately it has taken a lot longer for us to make forward progress on it, um, primarily because of the baseline issue, which was figuring out which patches we're currently failing that, you know, are failing on 5.15. Uh, Leia, who's a person on my team who's working on this, has been focusing on 5.15 because that's the cause kernel we're actually most interested in. It's based on 5.15 LTS. Um, and so what we've been doing is using an automated spinner uh, that is testing patches as that were identified using Greg and Sasha's um, automated scripts that were XFS specific, backport, you know, backporting them to 5.15 and then making sure that there were no regressions. And that's where the baseline uh, is very important. Uh, we are doing that with, uh, I think it's something like order of magnitude 10 different file system configs. We consulted with Derek, the XFS maintainer, um, what he was using, and we basically replicated that in our testing infrastructure so that we could test, you know, all the things. That's when we discovered that there were a whole bunch of tests that only pass if we cherry pick some of the hundred odd out of tree uh, uh, commits in XFS tests that are in Derek's personal tree that he has never actually gotten upstream. He works on it, it's a process. Um, and so I have my personal XFS test fork that has some of Derek's patches cherry-picked into it so that we could actually run the XFS test baseline. Um, and that's what we've been doing. 
Uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, Derek decided to take a mental health break this week. Leah is also on vacation this week, and I knew that there would be very few XFS folk here uh, this week. Um, but our intent is to uh, send a, a list of commits, a description of what we've done to the XFS list, and then there's a, going to be a negotiation about what is considered appropriate testing. Do we just simply send it to Greg and Sasha, CC Linux XFS, uh, and then let them knack patches? Do they want to um, explicitly act patches before they go to stable? Um, I have had members of the XFS community express that that was their desire. Other people have been willing to use the send it to Sasha and then we'll knack it. It's a negotiation, right? We have to work with the XFS community to see what they're actually comfortable with. Uh, but that is a discussion that I hope we will be opening uh, with the XFS development community next week. So one of, one of the things that uh, folks were comfortable with on the XFS front, uh, at least uh, at uh, MLS FMM in Utah, was essentially that there would be a group of volunteers, in this case it was Amir and myself, uh, to essentially uh, do the reviews for what would be candidates for fixes for XFS. Uh, that went out only for two releases, but one of the things with um, this sort of work is, as you guys who are familiar with running uh, FS tests will know, it takes a long time to establish a baseline. It takes a long time, and it's, it's, it's work, right? And then also identifying the issues also takes time. So essentially, um, it's thankless work too. Uh, it does take time, so uh, and you need resources. And when I when I talk about resources, I'm talking about you know pretty big systems, right? So I ended up having to buy my, uh, my own systems at home, but that doesn't really scale to to the level that you want to you know provide automation. In the next talk, I'll elaborate a bit more more how to scale some of these you know considerations, especially for stable, but. As it stands right now, um, essentially it's it's each developer doing their best effort, right? But that I don't think that scales, and that's uh, I, I'm not sure if Derek is going to be giving his talk on uh, maintainers, you know, you know, scaling and all that stuff. Is is he? Is he? Uh, no, he's not. I he okay. I got an email from him of what he wants to talk about. And I'm going to read, pretend to be Derek for. Half an hour. Okay, so um, so I think that um, I think what we need as a community is essentially a bit more of a collaborative effort on that front. Uh, resources is, is a consideration, but you know, again, in, in the next talk, I'll talk a bit about that too. Uh, but on the XFS side, you know, if you have candidate fixes, uh, I think you can pretty much just send them to Amir and, uh, you know, and me, and then basically we'll put them into a queue of, uh, of tests that we're basically running. Uh, and that should essentially give us confidence whether or not these are, um, you know, proper candidates or not. So um, by all means, you know, if you do have candidate fixes, please send them, you know, but uh, I'm, I'm just trying to give the lay of the land of the last conversation that we had about trying to address this problem. But I'm also trying to also provide a, an apology, I guess, as to why you haven't seen any other fixes yet merged for a long time for XFS, and that's because if you change employers and you lose a huge system, then basically, you basically lose your rig, right, to test a lot of stuff. So that's kind of like one of the problems, right? If you change employers and you had a big system to, to run tests, then where do you run them? So there, there are solutions to these problems, but, you know, it requires a bit more collaborative efforts. Yeah. Okay. We're going to let Jan say something. Yeah. He's been waiting a good long while. Yeah. Hi. Hello. Yeah, you're good, man. Can you hear me? Yep. Yep. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, so how, how actually distrust deal with this? like file system backporting fixes is uh, like, for example, we very much do care about XFS fixes. Yeah. So in our kernels, uh, although stable doesn't pick up fixes, we do pick up for the distro kernel basically. And I think Red Hat does the same. And it's that we leverage the Git fixes infrastructure. So basically when you, when you have the fixes tag, then even though the patch actually doesn't go to stable, it actually goes to us and then we basically backport the patch and add it to our distro kernel yeah? and that, that uh, and we also do all the testing like Luis did a lot of the automation as well <laughs> but but like regardless of that basically the point is that the distro then does the testing and so to get the confidence that actually the patch is good to go to the customers 
and so so this is the resources that need to be put both in the like developer time like people actually looking at the patches or people who have at least a bit of a clue <laughs> whether the patch is safe they look at the patch and decide whether this is good to backport or not and then of course like quite a lot of testing so i'm not sure if like as that said it mostly works out fine even without like targeted testing for ext4 but on the other hand it didn't work out a few times for XFS, which I believe is why things kind of, you know, why, why XFS guys decided that it's better for them to not backport anything because, you know, there were a few screw ups and let's say the personalities didn't work out together. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so, so like I, I think that git fixes is also like useful thing for this because there you have already the annotation like uh, Ted, yeah. let me just uh, oh, yeah. I'm sorry John are you are you finished uh, I yes just, okay I just want to give a, gim a glimpse about something I'll let you uh, ask what you want but uh, I, maybe some of you have been staring about on, at what I've, I'm trying to uh, display for a while trying to figure out what it is so uh, this was mostly auto-generated, right? This is something that I was looking for uh, when I was looking at uh, uh, backporting patches over the period of two years. I was missing a higher level context. Like there are around 600 patches between 5.10 and 5.17, I think, for XFS. And I wanted to look at it at a more higher level. So I created a tool that takes all the commits and finds them on the public uh, inbox and a mailing list and then uh, finds the cover letter and creates the links to the cover letters and then I have all the all the patch series and the patch series le levels that I went into upstream and then I could easily uh, pick by higher level patch sets in instead of picking commits that's one thing it's easy to to get out things that you don't need. And also, it's easier to understand by reading the cover letter uh, if you have any dependencies and such. So it's still human work. It's a lot of human work, but it's a great assistant for that human work. And I've created a branch with the backports already, which is being tested. Uh, one small feature to mention uh, that I added is looking up references to XFS tests in the cover letter, mailing li uh, list, uh, correspondence, and that's also auto generated here. So you can know, hmm, I see failure in test uh, 301. Maybe I need to backport uh, this patch series. It's not always a failure. Sometimes it's just related in some way, but it gives you context. Maybe I need to look there to see what's, what was discussed. Um, by the way, this is, this has been done by uh, looking at, at the pull requests. Uh, but just so you know, as a maintainer, when you're sending a pull request, you can use the same tool to generate those release notes if you want to attach them to the pull request. I mean, this is uh, generated in a uh, restructured test, but the tool also generates in text format. So I don't know, maybe you like that, you can use that. It's not, it's not been merged to uh, before. I don't know. I need to talk to Constantine if, if you guys find it interesting. Yeah. One other thought uh, that's probably worth uh, maybe some discussion is uh, as the ext4 upstream maintainer, about every three or four months, uh, I'll take the latest LTS releases, so 5.10. whatever, uh, 4.19. whatever, and run a full set of XFS tests that recent as of that time uh, to see what test failures there were. Uh, and it's not running the test that's hard, right? I mean, for me, it's, you know, literally less than $2 per, you know, retail GCE cost to run a full set of tests on 12 different XFS configs. It's not resources, really. It's the developer resources to then interpret the failures 
figure out if these are failures that will never actually get backported because there's no way we're going to, you know, get those changes back into the 4.19 kernel, or if it's a uh, patch that should have been backported but somehow didn't get auto-picked. And I think on average, it, I do this about every four months because that's when I have time. On average, there's like maybe between one and three patches that I will then manually backport um, and then send to the stable kernel uh, maintainers. So that is something that I think, you know, I don't know how many upstream file system maintainers do that. It's just simply a matter of time. Um, maybe there are improvements we can make to, uh, you know, auto-generated auto exclude lists that would, you know, make that less of a time burden. Or maybe this is an opportunity for us to recruit, um, you know, other developers into our file system development community to do that work because there's no reason why the maintainer is, you know, auditing uh, LTS test runs. Um, but that is something that is good and useful to do. There is value in uh, running, you know, XFS tests against the LTS kernels just to, you know, find, even if you're uh, using the auto backport mechanisms, the auto backports don't always, you know, get everything. I would go farther and say that, I mean, I'm not a fi uh, file system maintainer, but I'm a file system user. But if you're in charge of a project, a file system project, upstream is not a product. It's the base product. Uh, no, you're not using upstream. You're using a, a stable kernel. Uh, I mean, okay, not. Using a stable kernel, which is not LTS. That's fine. I want to ask you why. I want to ask you why, but I mean, if you're choosing one kernel per year, why not choose LTS? Because they want to manage Yeah, I mean, I think that's obvious. You, even in a company like Facebook, you probably have more than one kernel. And Microsoft, you know, they're going to be running kernels that are, that are basically LTS, like your example you mentioned. Mm -hmm. But there's also, you know, lots of workloads that are running on something that's more recent, and, you know, Red Hat and SUSE. And it's recent, but it's not upstream. I'm not, I'm not talking. It's no, no, I, I agree. LTS is upstream. XFS currently fixes for upstream, right? It's, it's .0. Not yeah. even the, the yeah. first LTS is, is usable. So, so there's some data here that may be really helpful. So I was curious about your point. So I looked at, at you know, how many things are in 5.10 stable, okay? From where? From which file system? I looked at eight of them. So I just looked at it, right? So ext4, great job. Ted's doing a good job. I know. He has over 25% of his commits are in stable. So 382 commits since 510, 96 of those are, you know, it's well over 25% actually because I'm including merges there. So um, BTRFS had 140. Um, I looked at my percentage as a maintainer. I'm obviously not doing a good job because I'm at about 13% or something, right? So I should be, I should have a higher percentage of commits than that. Um, it looks like that the number you're aiming for is about 25% based on looking at some of these other file systems. NFS is close, it's about 20%. So file systems should be backporting about 20% of their commits. EXT4 backports more. I, I don't think percent matters though. I well, mean, the, the it's, thing, it's a fixes. Like, well, I know that these are fixes, but what I'm getting at is that as a general rule, we're not backporting enough. Right. XFS was a disaster, but 9P had two. I mean, is that a good thing? It's probably I a bad backported thing. fifty something patches of XFS out of six hundred. Yeah, I mean, I think a right number is probably higher than that, because there's probably performance fixes and other things. But I am uh, curious that the numbers in LTS seems to be larger than ten percent for most file systems that are like not just the XT4. So obviously, maintainers, you know, we shouldn't be backporting all these things, right? That don't have to be, but clearly there are file systems that do like. NFS backports a lot higher percentage than NFSD. I don't know if their bugs are any different. I don't know. But anyway, it's an interesting story to look at. But one of the things that's as a maintainer, it's hard for me to run, is I don't, there's no, like, I can't fork XFS test and want, like, today XFS test is going to fail on 5.15 or 5.10 because we changed reflink behavior. So can't we have a stable branch of XFS test? Uh, well, yeah, it's an issue. FS test is not friendly to people testing stable. Not so friendly, 
but specifically for what you just said, the annotations that I added can help. Because if the test says uh, since kernel uh, something, you can run your own script to auto expand this test. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's, it's going to be merged to FS test soon. What, what I did is I created the, the, the helpers to annotate, and I annotated a lot of the, ex, uh, the overall FS tests. So we have an example. You can uh, continue. Yeah, I, and to be fair, like, I think that's great to have like, the actual infrastructure, but like, the, at least for ButterFS, and I assume most everybody else, like, we've already had this, and like, when we do the comments for the thing, if it's a regression test, it's like, okay, it was fixed by this patch title. So like, we can go through. And that's what I did. I mean, I didn't do the research now. I just used my own comments. Right, yeah, so that's what I'm gonna, like, as soon as your stuff is merged, I can go pull all that out and put it in there. But yeah. okay, it's two o'clock. Um, people on the call, we are moving over to the storage track since it's shared. So if you wanna jump off of this call and join the storage track call, uh, that's where we'll be. Thanks. Thank you.